Yo, so by the title and the thumbnail, I mean, I know what to expect. And I honestly am a lost for words right now. You know, um, it's honestly scary. And it is. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it just is sad to just know that this mother and father and possibly grandmother has something to do with the passing of this child. And I haven't had a chance to watch the video yet, but just to know this little girl's like her age, she's a child, a, a child. Yeah. Hey, watch the videos like this. Cause it, it get to me, but let's, let's since y'all sent it. I'm a door reaction to it. One thumbs up equals a thousand prayers. Y'all. So make sure that y'all get this video a thumbs up. Let's get it. Let's go. Mum, daughter, smiles and dances is what Nicola and three-year-old Kaylee Jade Priest would present to the world on TikTok. A normal mother and daughter having a laugh through the pandemic, trying to make most of what time they had together during lockdown. Once the cameras turned off, however, a grim reality away from the smiles would soon begin. That is so sad, honestly. Like, I don't even know what the point point of it would be. Got the dang cans to stick in her mouth. So crazy. A little person relying on you. And this is the stuff you do. So I guess this is surveillance. I wonder what they finna probably survey what happened throughout the day. Where it started. Wait. They turn around or she running from her? Man, this stuff's so sad, y'all. Uh, just the thought of what or what's what's about to happen is not gonna lie, it's, it's it's sad. It's really sad to know that this little girl that loves her mother, like she runs to her mother probably when she's scared, she's hungry, just everything. She took the life of her own daughter that loves her dearly. Like a lot of people in this world just don't deserve kids. I'm guessing that was the end. What you've just witnessed is Kaylee Jade's last day out at the park before she would go on to be wow. killed in her home by either her own mother, her mother's boyfriend, or both of them. She had been subjected to months of horrific abuse previous to this, and in that clip itself, police would come out to say that visible bruising could be seen and untreated bone fractures were present. But let's have a bit of a deep dive into this case and see what exactly went down on that summer's evening in the Kinghurst area of Birmingham. On the morning of the 9th of August 2020, emergency services had been called to Kingshurst House in Stonebridge Crescent. When both paramedics and police arrived at the scene, they found Kaylee laying lifeless in her room, and she would go on to be pronounced dead at around 11.25am. But first responders said something didn't feel right about this situation because a three-year-old girl with no underlying health conditions had just been found deceased by her mother, and there was visible bruising. So they decided to call detectives to the scene. Oh, for real. Once they'd been called over, Nicola would go on to be arrested so police could get her account of what she exactly should. went down. And she was treated as a suspect because she couldn't explain what had happened to Kaylee. Police would let her go though, presumably on bail, and then a series of TikToks had been made. A tribute TikTok was posted with the caption, 
RIP my baby. Ten days later on the 17th, she can be seen crying and lip syncing the lyrics to the song to my parents. The lyrics go, I'm sorry mum and dad, I know I messed up bad, should have, should have done better. I'm sorry mum and dad. This is more than likely a crocodile tear appeal though to her parents to say that she should have been a better mother. Four days later another tribute post was made to Kaylee with the caption, I love you so much darling, mummy will never forget you ever, RIP Angel. But then only one day later the social media narcissist would post a TikTok's dance challenge video with the caption, way too serious, laughing face, dancing always helps me. One day later on the 23rd, she would post this video with the caption, love my makeup purchase, everything goes perfect. That would be the Wait, last what? video uploaded to her TikTok account, so we can presume a short while after this, the police would have finished their investigation, For real? and Nicola and her boyfriend at the time, Callum Redfern, were charged with Kaylee's murder. You see, the investigation had been opened after the results of the forensic post-mortem. It revealed that Kaylee suffered a number of significant injuries to her chest and abdomen area. She had also suffered severe internal injuries during an assault, and was recorded as having small tears to the brain and a oh. punctured lung. This was the result of heavy blows, possibly kicks or stamps and a punch or a very hard slap to the head. Some of her injuries showed signs of healing and were dated back two weeks before her death, suggesting she had been a victim of physical abuse before. The injuries that caused her death were described as something similar you'd see as if she had been involved in a road traffic collision. Wow. But on top of other evidence including CCTV would secure the charge that was brought against the pair. You see, the CCTV showed that both Nicola and Callum were present at the flat. The CCTV TV footage that you've seen at the start of the video took place on the 7th. Of course, they did leave the flat, but they came back, and after that, they didn't leave. Callum turned up on the 8th with a friend and would go on to leave at some point later, but police said the time frame that Callum was present is when the assault took place and ultimately Kaylee died so the pair were charged. Both would go on to deny the murder charge, the lesser charge of manslaughter, allowing the death of a child and child cruelty, so a trial was held at Birmingham Crown Court in June of 2021. In court, it was heard that Kaylee had been subjected to a brutal assault at some point on the 8th of August 2020, but didn't die straight away. It's thought that if she'd been taken to hospital for treatment, there was a very good chance that she could have survived, but by the time Nicola rang for emergency services, she was already dead. The prosecution said that the catalyst to Kaylee's death may have been Kaylee interrupting Nicola and Callum after they were noted as spending, quote, time alone together in the bedroom. Wow. Now, although both of them were on trial for Kaylee's murder, they both tried to pin it on each other. Talking of previous history of abuse, Nicola would say that on one previous occasion, she recalls hearing Callum punch Kaylee, and on the day in question, she says that she went for a cigarette while Callum was putting Kaylee to bed. Within the time that she said she was gone to smoke this cigarette, she went on to say that Callum had smacked Kaylee for biting him while he was helping her put her pajamas on, although there was no visible bite marks on his hand. Callum would try and pin it on Nicola in police interviews, but ultimately he never gave evidence in court. But witness statements would give an insight to how Nicola Angle behaved Star, around her daughter. Take the testimony from her ex-boyfriend's mother, for example. Nicola had lived with her back in 2018. The mother would go on to say that at first, Nicola would call Kaylee a rat and a bitch. But as time progressed, she would give her, quote, the odd smack with an open hand on her arms and legs. A 17-year-old also gave evidence in court who sometimes helped Nicola babysit. She told the court that one month prior to Kaylee's death, Nicola slapped her daughter around the head twice in anger. The first time was because she asked for food, and the second was because she placed a blanket over her baby brother's face. In court, Callum's friend would go on to give evidence. Remember, this is the friend who turned up at the flat with Callum on the day of the attack. Crazy. He would go on to say that he didn't see any violence take place and that, quote, the normal routine went down. But he did go on to say that after wanting to leave the property for quite some time and Callum not wanting to leave, out of nowhere in a hurry, he said that he did want to leave and so they left. The court was told of how Kaylee's room wasn't the best living conditions for a small child. 
There was no carpet, the mattress was dirty, and when paramedics entered the room to check to see what was happening, they couldn't turn the light on because there was no bulb. But wow. although the prosecution couldn't pinpoint who exactly was to blame for the death of Kaylee, messages would show that both were just as guilty as each other. In a text message exchange between the pair on the 24th of July 2020, so just slightly prior to Kaylee's death, Nicola would go on to say, quote, I'm going to kill her because she keeps leaving the living room or going into the kitchen. So I've hit her and smacked her for shitting in her nappy. Callum responded, good, give her one from me. To which Nicola said, I will, babe. Three days later, Callum messaged Nicola saying, I'm going to keep that little brat away from me, sick of your spunking daughter. But after a trial at Birmingham Crown Court, both were cleared of murder, but were found guilty on the lesser charge of manslaughter. And Nicola was also found guilty of child neglect in relation to Kaylee's past injuries. For this, Nicola was handed a 15-year jail sentence, and Callum was handed a 14-year jail sentence. That's sad. But once again, another story of how a parent has gone on to kill their own child. We have been going over some similar stories over these past few weeks. But the one person who Kaylee relied on to protect her ultimately would be the one she needed protecting from. I mean, even Nicola's own mother had contacted social services to tell them about the abuse that was going on, but it's unclear if any action had been taken. Nicola Nicola's mother would also give evidence in court against her own daughter in the hopes of seeing justice for so. Kaylee. I'm unsure why a mother would go on to abuse and kill her own child though. Someone she had carried for nine months just to ultimately put them through months of abuse, which resulted in lots of injuries, Years. including 19 fractures to the ribs. Wow. I just don't understand how you could do that to anyone, let alone a child, and that child being your own child. And instead of going out your way to put your daughter first, it seems like you just wanted to abuse her and put a man first. Instead of buying Kaylee what she needed, a decent room, a decent mattress and food, Nicola, believe it or not, saved £900 out of her universal credit money for people who don't live in the UK or aren't aware of what universal credit is. It's basically welfare money from the government. And she used this money to buy Callum a car. But the thing is, Callum didn't even care for Nicola because on top of what he had been saying about using Nicola for sex, he took the £900 and pocketed 300 of that because the car only cost £600. Wow. But give the video a like for more crime-related content like this. Man, that is sad. And it's so messed up to know that that little girl, they probably, like, did that to that little girl since she was born. And it's so sad. That's why I feel like, personally, not everybody deserves to be parents. Like, everybody, like, everybody in the world is not ready to be parents. The fact that these two crazy individuals... And only 15 years doing state time? 15 years in state, that's like five years. That's like five to five to seven years they're going to be out in state time. Good behavior. They need way more justice than that. Like that little girl was, was literally put through hell, like probably since she was born and brought into their life. Just imagine... The person that you look for when the most scariest, the most dangerous, the most just not sure of time is the person that just constantly like hit you. That little girl probably got hit and put on punishment in all these dangerous situations. And when her mama caught her in there, she probably hugged her mama and kissed her and said, Mama, I love you. And it honestly brings tears to my eyes to know that they would do something like that to a little child, a little girl. They didn't have nothing to do with anything. She just born into this world that she didn't ask to be born into, especially with the type of parents. And the fact that they took her out, that little girl had to literally experience trauma her entire being into this world. I just wish it didn't happen like that and she was able to be with a family that loved her because kids give that unconditional love no matter what goes on. And it just, it just hurt my feelings, man. It made me sad. It put tears in my eyes. And honestly, it, it, because I got little sisters, you know, and I will have children one day, like, in my life. And I know that I'm going to 
I, I would really want to give to my children the world. And I couldn't imagine laying a finger. I don't even want to whoop my children, even though they probably gonna need to get disciplined. It would hurt me to see that the person that loves me the most would, would just cry. And I'm gonna have to stop talking about this before I get emotional myself because it's just thinking of just hurting a little child. It just, it's just, it's, 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 it's wild. Unlike equals a thousand prayers for this child. Let's get it, let's go.